through all the details on how to get started meal planning, how to make meal planning work better, uh, you know, everything under the sun to help you get a little bit of focus on what's for dinner, but really to help you save money in the grocery store. That's the ultimate goal of meal planning. Like it's a perk to not have to think about what's for dinner, but the goal is to save money. So you know, get two benefits out of this. So we are gonna go as deep into it as we can with just some tricks, some ways to make it a little faster. And we're gonna talk about freezer cooking, which is a happy thing. You should at least try it once in your life. I'm pretty sure you're gonna fall in love with it, but you know, just try it. So we're gonna talk about all of that as we go through tonight. If you've got questions that are on or off topic, just leave them in the comments and between myself or my husband, uh, I will try to give you an answer. That's our goal. It is a Q&A, um, so I always come with a topic, but I'm also here to answer any questions. So feel free to ask away in the comments and I will gladly try to help. So as we dive in, I will tell you just a confession. Um, for years, while running Southern Savers, I would always tell folks, you know what, we don't meal plan. And that was the truth for us because meal planning, I would make a list, but it was really, really rare that we followed that schedule. Um, here in the last few years, it's become very much a part of our life to just have it mapped out, have some kind of idea of what we are gonna eat in the next week. And it doesn't have to be assigned to a day, but just having a plan, even one week at a time, a plan uh, makes sure that you have everything you need on hand and you're not making those extra trips back to the grocery store for this or for that little item. It also just helps you to, in a sense, de-stress. Like, I know that I have everything on hand. I'm not gonna hit that 10 minutes until dinner time and I need one key item. Not gonna happen. Uh, that was really for me why I started when we moved to the country, which was almost seven years ago now. Uh, the nearest grocery store is 25 minutes away. I can't do that. Um, and we did recently this past week, I thought I had sour cream on hand. Uh, we did not have sour cream on hand. So I went to the gas station, that's a few miles up the road. Uh, they don't sell sour cream. Turns out I had a feeling they wouldn't, uh, but decided right then just looking at the prices of what they did have that I will never do that again. Uh, it won't, won't even consider it at milk being like $8 a gallon. Gas stations are off limits for groceries, guys. So in crisis moment, you figure out something else you're gonna eat or you make a meal plan so that you don't have that crisis moment. Um, now it was totally not my fault on that one. My husband did not tell me what he wanted for his birthday dinner until that morning. So I'm innocent on this one. Um, but we did come up with an alternate solution for sour cream, just in case you ever needed it. But that's the point for me. That is what got me to finally like change my tune was just the benefit of not running out of something that I needed for dinner this week. I had it, I had it on hand as long as I knew what the plan was for this week. So we share a month long meal plan um, every month on Southern Savers at the beginning of, or right before the beginning of the month. I don't even do a month long meal plan. I'm a weekly kind of girl because things do change. You've got different plans you didn't know about two weeks ago. It just works better for our large family. So basically to start off, I want you to figure out what's gonna work for your family. And if you're brand new to meal planning, I really don't want you to try to bite off a whole month. I want you to go a week at a time to get your feet wet, to kind of figure out how it's gonna work for you. But I also think if you do start to plan out things, you're gonna realize a month isn't actually as long as it seems. Once you factor in all the things you've got going on, you may realize, you know what? I don't have 28 meals to plan in February. I've really got like 12 because we always eat this like every Friday night or we're always not home uh, every, for us, most Monday nights. We're riding home from American Heritage Girls. So we eat sandwiches in the car on the way home. Uh, so I don't need to plan a meal for Monday nights. Monday nights are set. You know, you start to figure out what nights don't need to have something. And all of a sudden this whole meal planning thing, it starts to feel a little less stressful. It should also start to make you realize, wait, maybe I don't cook as many meals as I thought I did. And it might help you eat out less. So our Monday nights, if we didn't plan it, we wouldn't have sandwiches in the car. It means that I have to think about, do we have everything to make those sandwiches? so that we don't eat out every Monday night, fast food. I don't want that, I don't want it in my budget, but I also don't really want it in my kids either. So having a plan ahead of time saves us in numerous ways. Um, so one thing um, I, I do wanna share today, well-timed on my part, uh, we did share a how-to meal plan for a month. Uh, literally, you can take that for a week if you want, but shared some printables with that too in the post. So 
a printable blank calendar. You can fill in the dates and kind of get an idea of how you want to get started, but also some tips of how to get started on that month long meal plan. Um, so some ideas here to help you. Um, let's just not even go a month. I've got this fun little, um, it's like a weekly planner for your family, I think is, was their goal, but I totally used it for meal planning for a while and for other things that we had going on. Um, so, you know, looking at this, this is um, probably from last year, uh, or maybe this is, would be before the year or before everything got shut down. Um, but meals were at the bottom, what we had going on and, the, and at the top. Now, however you wanna make this look for your family, whether you've got all the family's agenda on it or it's just your agenda, but you can have mapped out really quick, just the basics. I don't need you to map out every single thing. We don't need to map out our side entrees. I wouldn't recommend desserts every night. For me, it's our main dish. Mapping out what are, you know, is it pizza night? Is it Italian chicken? So this is like chicken with literally Italian dressing poured on top and some cheese in the oven. Guys, we don't, we aren't Martha Stewart around here, but it tastes delicious, so it works. You do what works for your family. But just going through with the basics, the highlights of what you're gonna eat that night for dinner. So trying to, here we go. This one, I, I just plugged in some meals. I did plug in rice on some things. We eat a lot of rice here. I shared that the other night. Um, and I, I can't complain at all. It's one of my favorite foods, just rice and butter. I'd do it if I could all by itself. Um, but just so you kind of get an idea, our meals are always simple. Uh, and the other thing to also help you to realize is that if I kept showing you nights, you would start to see, and I can even, um, you know, it would, it would start to look all the same. Because most families, if you were to sit down, and maybe this is step one for some of you, Sit down and just make a list of what we like to eat. Each, each meal on a different line. And I think you're gonna find you already have about 12 meals that you regularly rotate through. Once we get this list, regularly rotating through on this list, um, then you get an idea. You know what, I don't have that much to plug in. Um, and you'll be a little less panicky. Um, so hopefully that will, you know, just give you a calming moment as you get started because you realize if I did want to plan for a, a whole month, uh, I've already got 12. If you want to rotate those through every two weeks, then you, you ate the same thing twice in a month. That's not really that huge. Um, you wouldn't even have to throw in anything new. You just rotate through those 12 meals that you love. You know, it doesn't have to be overwhelming. The point of it, I'm going to know what I need. Um, and, uh, sorry guys, um, I'm gonna know what I need. I'm not gonna have things that I run out of. I'm gonna hopefully also not be adding things to the cart that either aren't on sale or I don't need. You know, how many of us come home with things from the grocery store thinking that we're gonna work them into a meal um, and, then, um, and then we never end up eating them. They just live in the back of our pantry collecting dust. Uh, this is where having a meal plan uh, helps you to not make those purchases too. So one week, if that's where you wanna start, it really will be huge for you. Now for me, I shop every week. I shop the deals every week. So meal planning by the week is perfect for our family and our routine. If you tend to shop once a month or you know paydays every two weeks, then you that's what I would plan for how long we're gonna map out our meal plan. Base that on how often you shop the deals or go to the store if you're not even shopping the deals that's where I would start. So that you've got that idea when you walk into the grocery store, what do I need to make these meals? Now, some of you, if you've recently watched the couponing workshops that I do, uh, you'll know that need is not a word that I tend to use, but it's really because we have a stockpile. So I could actually meal plan entirely off of our pantry and I do not need to look at a weekly ad because I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna buy what's on sale, but I don't have to have anything. Um, so if you're gonna, that was, that's always a question I get is, do I need um, to plan my meals around what is on sale? That's, someone always words it that way, exactly, using that word need. You know what, if you're just getting started on trying to save money and, tr and getting into grocery store deals, yes, you do need to plan your meals based on what is on sale. But for those of us who've been at this, I've got a pantry behind me loaded with food. I don't have to follow the sale as much. It doesn't hurt to, like this past week, if you wanted to have a Super Bowl party, it was a great week for a Super Bowl party because everything was on sale. Um, you know, if you wanna eat uh, tacos, then 
May the, the 5th is a great day for you. You know, you, you can definitely plan some meals around some of those holidays and some of those sale ads that you know certain things are definitely gonna be in the ad. But for most of us, we can pull from our stockpiles once we've been doing this long enough. Now, before we move on from that, if you are wanting to plan your meals based on what is on sale, um, for Publix and for Kroger, we have added in meal plans each week based on what is on sale that week. So if you go to Publix on Southern Savers, one of the flyouts will be Publix meal plans and Kroger, Kroger meal plans. I'm only doing them for those two stores. Um, I just don't have the time to do them for any others, but those are our two biggest stores in terms of the number of people that are going to those pages. Uh, so just trying to help, help you get some ideas of what can I make with what is on sale this week. Uh, it's a great help. You know, maybe you don't want a coupon and you don't want to have a stockpile, then use the list every week, but it's definitely a help for folks that are just getting started to have an idea of what is on sale, how can I keep our expenses down shopping those deals. Um, so Tommy is asking and saying, I'm looking for healthy meal plans. Um, so there are a number of ways to go with that, Tommy. I, and there are definitely some that you can pay for. I don't know that you need to go that route. What I would look at is actually meals that you like to eat and just ways to make those meals healthier. Um, I have, I think there are a lot of people that have fallen into paying for something that's going to tell you what to eat and you're going to magically lose weight or you're going to magically have your cholesterol lowered. Uh, in all honesty, you're not going to stick to those. They're not what you're used to eating nine times out of 10. So really the best thing you could do is, again, make a list of the meals that you love. Now, obviously this isn't gonna help if fried chicken is like number two on your list, and, um, but it, there are still ways to make those items healthier so that you're still eating the things that you enjoy, but you're making them better uh, or better for you. May not taste quite, as, quite the same, but better for you, and you're much more likely to stick to that sort of meal plan than one that someone else mapped out for you but that has nothing that you normally like to eat on it. Uh, and that's, that's typically what you know any psychologist would even tell you about trying to lose weight or trying to eat healthier is that when we go to this, some, to this system that is so against what we normally do or so different from what we normally do that the odds of following it, um, each week that you follow it is gonna get less and less because at some point you're just gonna wanna give up. Uh, and that's you know the whole logic behind diets that are um, cutting massive sections out of, of your normal routine. Now, that said, we do have a month long meal plan and I'd have to go digging to find it, but we did one month that was entirely keto. So anyone that wants to eat keto, you can go grab that meal plan and just repeat it. Uh, it's a different meal for 30 days. Odds are you're gonna like a few of them and you can start to plug those back in. Um, but if you're specifically trying to do keto, hopefully that meal plan will help you without having to pay for anything. Um, no need to pay. There are so many recipes that are out there in the world. Just pulling out some of them that sound good to you and trying them much cheaper than paying for a meal plan site. And there are definitely some out there, but no need to do that. Um, yeah, Heather, you're exactly right. You can modify all of them to be healthier. Uh, and it's just depending on what you're trying to cut out of your budget I mean, or out of your diet, sorry, out of your budget too, but out of your diet. Uh, and there are so many different diets these days that, you know, keto, Weight Watchers would never approve of all the fat and all the, the meat and everything that's behind that. So it just depends on where you're trying to go. You just modify what those meals are to be healthier for you. Um, okay, and yes, so um, G&J um, is specifically asking for a website where you plug in ingredients. And I always mention this one. Uh, this is my favorite website for finding what you want to eat tonight based on what you have in your pantry. It's called Supercook, supercook.com. Um, I actually, I went to their Facebook page earlier today and they uh, recently released an app. Um, so they're kind of advertising it up here at the top or they did last year. So you can use their app, you can use their website. I did notice in um, some of the comments that they don't necessarily um, flow together, the web website and the app. So maybe you just decide which one you wanna use. You plug in what ingredients you have and it spits out what you can make with those ingredients. So if I come in here and I say I have potatoes and onions and carrots, um, it will start to adjust the meals based on what I have put in. Um, obviously I've just plugged in um, vegetables, but you can plug in your meats as well. So I'm uh, gonna, I'm just randomly selecting things, but you'll start to see these meals on the side change. So I plugged in ground beef, sausage, and ham. 
uh, and based on the potatoes and whatnot. It doesn't mean they're healthy, potatoes and sausage and gravy, home fries. It's just giving you some ideas of what you can make with what is in your pantry. It says I can make 96 different recipes based on what's in their system. This is really just the only way that I use it. I don't use it every week. I don't even, I, maybe once a month in a, I can't decide what we wanna eat. I, or I need to go shopping, maybe we're low on a particular type of meat, then I can get some ideas that are different, um, just plugging in the things that we have on hand. But this is a great resource and it's free, supercook.com, um, or their app I think is Supercook in the app store on both sides. Um, <laughs> Janelle, I agree with you. She says the best diet she ever did was just smaller portions of the things that you like. Uh, lost weight and kept it off. Exactly, I think portion size is probably most of our issues. Uh, and smaller portions can save you money too. So there you go. Uh, a whole big <laughs> way to save money without even trying, uh, just eating less food. Um, so Supercook is a great resource. There are other apps that are out there. Keep in mind most, most apps for recipes and meal plans have a cost. Um, so use the free version if you want. Don't feel like you have to plug in um, and pay for an app. Believe me, I would imagine 90% of the recipes that these apps are going to offer you are really free recipes that you would have found online. I am not a fan of paying for recipes um, that you could have found somewhere else, seriously. There's another app, it does have a free version. It is called Meal I'm, so it's like Meal Time, but they left the T off. Um, so Meal and then I-M-E. Uh, it, it has a paid version, but it has a free version. Uh, and it also will let you plug in what you have and then spit out some recipe ideas for you. Um, so if you're looking for just another option, everything else that is out there is um, gonna end up making you pay. So those are the two, Supercook is free, Meal I'm, um, Meal minus the T for meal time, uh, is free for a certain number of recipes and then beyond that, they're gonna make you pay. So just use it occasionally when you're looking for something new, some new idea. Um, and don't, don't go for the paid version. I mean, you could, but I, I won't. Um, Rachel asks, how do we save money on dairy, especially cheese? I don't see a lot of coupons and it's harder food. It is a harder food to buy in bulk since it's te texture changes. Um, so Rachel, there are a few things that I do. We have seen some cheese coupons here lately. We always have coupons for Sargento, it feels like. And we even had for the last couple of weeks, it's gone now. But for the last couple of weeks before the Super Bowl, we had an Ibotta offer for Kraft. Um, so they do come out. Uh, we tend to stock up when they come out. And what I do for us is I tend to buy it in the, the hunks, the chunks, whatever we wanna call those, um, instead of the shredded. It takes up less room. It's the same amount of cheese, but it takes up less room in your refrigerator. Uh, you can freeze cheese, you're right, it does change texture. So if you choose to freeze cheese, anyone that's, uh, you know, like what, freezing cheese, you can do it, but you just really wanna use it for baking only after you unfreeze it. It's great for baking, but you would never wanna just eat it on a salad. Um, it, it definitely has a different texture once it's been um, thawed. So for us, I do buy in bulk a little bit. Um, we'll see Publix, Kroger, all of the main grocery stores, they have their house brand cheese, but most of them have a big, like 32 ounce, like two pound bag that they sell. And they will put that on sale. Publix will tend to put it on sale and it's a pretend sale, but they will run that 32 ounce bag as low as like seven bucks. Um, now that might sound high for you, but a 32 ounce bag is really like buying um, four of the individual hunks. Um, so at that sense, you just got them for less than two bucks a piece. Um, which in the grocery store isn't bad. We will see the, buy, the BOGO sales. If we've got a coupon to go with the BOGO sales, that'll usually also bring us under $2 a piece for the eight ounce size bag, which is the two cup. If we're going for the shredded cheese, it's kind of the, the gold standard. Most of the, the basic size cheeses are in that six to eight ounce category. Um, so looking for the BOGO sales, looking for the big bags when they're on a decent sale. Um, but when I say Publix puts them on a pretend sale, they will put them like 50 cents off or $1 off. So uh, that was this past week. They were uh, like $8 instead of $9. You really want them to be down. You want them to be below $2 and eight ounce size. So you're looking for that $7 sale or we have even seen 650. Uh, you know, it just depends on the store that you're in. We even see coupons for those. Um, Kroger as well, if you're a Kroger shopper, will put cheese, specifically Kraft usually, 
uh, in the mega events. And um, sometimes we'll even have digital coupons for those. So watching for those sales and then stocking up a little bit. So, you know, your fridge probably has a bin that's labeled cheese. I want you to fill it. <laughs> I want it to all be cheese. Uh, when you see the sale going a little crazy, use your food processor if you've got one um, to just grate your cheese for you. It probably has an attachment. You may not have ever used it. So we're buying them in those, those chunks, um, but you can easily turn them into shredded without having to sit there if, if you have a food processor. Um, I say it has an attachment. This is actually kind of funny. I don't actually know how to attach ours because I just always turn to my husband and I ask him to shred it for me, but he knows how to make the food processor shred the cheese. Ours was uh, inherited from a grandparent, so it's crazy old, but it works great. He just is the one that happens to know how to make it work. Um, oh, and um, imagine and create. You heard me talk about the meal plans on the website. You do not need to do anything on Southern Savers to see them. So if you head to Southern Savers, I actually have it pulled up uh, and you're on the site right here under frugal living. Uh, if you click on frugal living, it will drop down. Oh, I didn't mean to click on it, um, but menu plans is third down and you will see all of the past menu plans that we've done. So um, meal planning, we've got the Publix meal plan. You've got the monthly meal plan. We also posted today how to make a monthly meal plan. Um, so all of those are right there under frugal living at the top and then under menu plan. So you do not have to create an account. You don't have to do anything to get that on the website and they're all free to download. Um, there's actually nothing on Southern Savers that has a cost. Um, though I, you know, if you want to pay me, I'm okay with that. No, it's all free. So download it, print it, use them as much as you can. Use it as a guide. I'm not saying you have to print the February meal plan and eat everything that's mapped out but it's giving you an idea, get the printable, the blank printable that we put up today if you want and plug in the ones you like. Uh, another thing that I would recommend, and you know, I should have grabbed this, but as you start to meal plan and you start to gather those recipes, we have gone uh, simple in terms of how we store our recipes, but we just have a three ring binder and I use pocket protector sheets uh, that you can buy in like sets of 50 and 100. And so when we cook a recipe and we love it, it just gets stuck in a pocket protector sheet and saved uh, long term, and that is our our personal recipe book. I don't know how many of you guys. Uh, this was us for a long time. We would just go and try to remember where we found the recipe and pull it back up again. But it basically comes for us that as soon as we eat the meal, if we loved it, it then that just gets saved immediately. If we didn't love it, uh, then the paper probably sits on the counter for a few days and eventually gets thrown away. Um, you know, just keeping it real. But that is our way of saving the things that we love. Uh, and I would encourage you to do the same thing. So as you are adding new recipes in and just trying them out, if you love them, that you find a way to save them. Um, and for me, I, I usually print them out. I don't have an iPad sitting on my kitchen counter, um, but you could create basically, you know, a folder of favorite recipes that you're putting in the bar on your browser or, you know, however you wanna organize these. For me, just printing them and putting them in little sheet protectors because cooking is kind of messy, just works, it's simple. Um, it's old school, but it works. So that is what we do. Uh, and that's what I would encourage you to do with the meal plans on Southern Savers or however you're planning, that you do have a way to save the ones you love, because uh, it really stinks when you cannot remember where you found it to try to find the same recipe again. Uh, and you'll be very thankful that you did some way of doing that in the end. Um, okay, so one more thing, and then I, I just saw, um, Paige, your off topic question, we will totally get there. Um, so I told you I want you to make a list of your favorite meals, but I also would encourage you to make a list of just staple items um, that you have in your pantry or that you need to add to your pantry. So keeping those staple items on hand is gonna make meal planning all the more easy. And what I mean by that is some basics like olive oil, vegetable oil, butter, some basic seasonings. Maybe you have a seasoning blend that you like. We have one, I call it our house seasoning. It's really like a home fry seasoning, I think is what it's called but I can buy it at our local restaurant supply store in like a bottle that's this tall. And I put it on everything. We had um, chicken wings last night. I just did that in salt, done. Uh, you know, could it have been fancier? Yes. Could, it, could I have gotten it in the air fryer in under four minutes fancier? No. Um, so it, this, you know, it was after night church trying to get dinner going. I love having a house seasoning because I don't have to sit there digging through the spice cabinet. I just have a go-to that I use on a lot of things. Uh, now we have a spice cabinet, but it's just saving me time. So it's little things like that that you can do for yourself uh, to save time. 
along those lines, uh, you know, this isn't freezer cooking, but it's freezer prepping. Uh, and I would consider those your staple items as well, but having chopped onion already in your freezer, maybe you grabbed a bag and you just sat there, put on goggles and chopped them all at the same time. Um, having, it will cook bacon in, uh, we buy it in like a two pound frozen chunk and we'll cook the whole thing one night and then we'll put all the extras in the freezer cooked. Well, the next time we eat breakfast for dinner, that's what we, it's always on our meal plan at least once a week. Um, breakfast for dinner, well, every other week, I don't have to cook bacon or sometimes every three weeks I have to cook bacon, you know, I can stretch it. But it's also marvelous when our meal plan calls for like corn and potato chowder and it wants three pieces of bacon in the meal. Well, I don't have to go cook three pieces of bacon, I've cut it in the freezer. So taking advantage of maybe cooking a little extra, putting it aside, chopping up vegetables, putting them aside, so that when you do try those recipes, it doesn't all of a sudden like derail cooking time, but it also doesn't send you to the store for those items either. You have them on sale. So, so many of us think of our pantry staples, but I want you to branch that out into your pantry and your freezer staples um, so that you do have so many things that are already prepared and already put aside for you to make that easier. So for us, it is chopped veggies, bacon. I usually always have some ground uh, beef already cooked in the freezer. We'll cook it up in a big batch. We'll save half and we'll use the other half for dinner that night. And we also usually always have shredded cooked chicken. Um, so we'll cook a bunch up and then we'll save half uh, or more for future recipes that go in casseroles, chicken pot pies, just makes it simple. Um, we're gonna talk about freezer cooking a little bit more, but let me answer your question page before you feel like I forgot you. Uh, random off topic CVS question. If I have two coupons for 40% off Garnier face products, can I use both and will extra care bucks affect how much is taken off? Yes, extra care bucks will affect how much is taken off. You could use both um, potentially, but I don't think the second one's gonna get you anything. So most of those, it's not 40% off one Garnier product, it is 40% off all of the Garnier facial care that you buy. And so it's only going to apply one time because it's not like a four off 10 or a you know something like that or a $2 off one. It's already applying. And so then when the store coupon goes to apply to the next one, it will already see that that store coupon has applied over the whole total. Um, so I, I cannot think of the last time that I had to, um, but I am pretty certain that they would not both apply. Uh, what I have found with the percent off ones is that they, you need to go in expecting it to really not take off much. Definitely, if you plan on paying most of your total with extra care bucks, it's gonna take off like 25 cents in the end. So um, don't go in with a huge high hope of it taking off a bunch. Um, maybe you'll be pleasantly surprised, but I kind of doubt it. Okay, um, to keep going back on, oh, I just saw someone, um, Oh, Kristen is also mentioning Harris Teeter for cheese to go back to the cheese. Uh, usually has it on sale, buy two, get three on a regular basis for their graded. So yeah, it's kind of learning the store that you shop at and, and when they run specials or what that price is. The, you know, this is also kind of a plug too to use the item search that is on Southern Savers uh, and literally search for shredded cheese or chunk cheese, either one and the stores that you shop in in your area. Um, so whatever you wanna plug in here, it will show you all of the past sales. Um, so I'm gonna go back for a month here, search current sales. Um, for me, I have the item search tailored and you can do that too if you come up to your edit profile. So I have it to only show the six stores that I regularly shop in. But over the last month, these are all the sales that we've seen on cheese so that you can get an idea of, you know, what are the sales that I'm looking for? What, what price range is a good price to grab these items? Um, 250 is kind of like, I mean, it's kind of a sale, but for me, it's looking for those chunks and those bags to be less than $2. That is uh, as low as we will get them. Um, here was Kraft Shedded Cheese with that Ibotta for $1.84. We've gotten them even lower, but you just kind of learn where you are. Dairy is expensive and the price of dairy has actually gone up a lot in the last year. Um, so we aren't seeing as many coupons as we did either. You just kind of learn what you can. Um, Okay, so back to meal plans. Um, and Rachel's saying her go-to is starting to be Sam's Club. And Rachel, I would say when you come to the warehouse clubs for frozen and refrigerated uh, and some fresh, they do have some decent deals. Be wary on warehouse clubs in the can package though. You will usually, nine times out of 10, beat the warehouse club sales in can and packaged items in the grocery store with grocery sales and definitely if you're throwing in some coupons. Um, 
Okay. Uh, and Anna is chiming in to give you some tips there on um, the CVS as well. So if you don't miss Anna's comment page uh, on how that works for her. Um, <laughs> oh, there you go. Wendy says a funny story today. Um, she had a partial onion in a Ziploc bag frozen and she needed chopped onions. She took a hammer to the onion in the Ziploc and the onion shattered to the correct size pieces. So we should just freeze them whole. That sounds like it would be a lot more fun actually. Um, and just go to it. Uh, it could be therapy as well as you get ready for dinner, Wendy. Um, but kind of fun. Okay, so in terms of meal planning, some other tips that I have for you, um, you know, if you're trying to find new recipes, uh, there's just some great places to go to. You know, not necessarily like, oh, I don't even know where to start. Go to Pinterest and just type in favorite recipes. That is like the key Pinterest board name for recipe bloggers. They have a whatever their blog name is and favorite recipes, and you're gonna find so many boards to just sit there and scroll through. You probably spend hours on Pinterest looking, but that is a great place to get some recipe ideas. So don't forget about Pinterest. Um, you can definitely do blogs. You can do you can do cookbooks. Uh, if you want to search just some random sites, uh, you know, Food Network. Uh, they're there because they're a TV show and they want to sell their products, but they do have some great recipes that you can scroll through, and they're all free. Uh, you know, it doesn't hurt to try and just see what you can find. But I found that Pinterest is probably the easiest go-to for me on just finding some good recipes. And it's all picture-based, so you get to see how yummy it looks before you cook it, right? Um, so some other ways to, um, and you know, talking about ways to save recipes, maybe you create your own Pinterest board too of things that you loved, things that you hated. Use it as your own little filing box if that's what you want. I know a lot of folks are like, I don't really get Pinterest, but it can be helpful for just saving things that you're wanting to use later. Um, so some other things that I would recommend uh, as you dive in and you are gonna try new meals, um, definitely if you're gonna print them out and save them, leave yourself some notes on the side. For example, we have one that we love. We just stumbled upon it. The name of the recipe I'm pretty sure is literally the world's best chocolate chip cookie recipe. Um, but in it, she calls for you to add, to use buttered salt and to add salt. And so the first time we made it, they were a little on the salty side. Every other time, we put a little note off to the side and we have kind of modified it to work for us and what we wanna do on that chocolate chip cookie recipe. But I would encourage you to do the same thing. Little thing, little tips to save on, off to the side. So if we do start to reuse these recipes, we already remember, what did we do differently? What did we not like about it? Uh, what did someone at the table not like about it? So you can make sure that they like it again the next time. This is also, some folks will call it keeping a meal journal or a log, but we're basically doing that on the recipe. Now you could do that as well. Um, you know, if you're gonna make your own meal plans, you can also do this by saving your meal plans so that I can remember, what did we do last month? We ate something last month that was delicious. So when the month is over and you take it off the fridge or the week is over and you take it off the fridge, you don't have to chunk it. Um, for me, in our meal plans, literally guys, this is what I do. Piece of paper, fold it in half, and our meal plan is on the fridge. It's just usually a leftover piece of paper too, so you don't need to get anything fancy. But if I wanted to take this and just transpose it into a real journal or into a notebook so that you're just gonna keep really quick what we wrote this week uh, or what we, what we ate this week, write it down. Um, not for like posterity's sake, I don't necessarily care four years from now what we ate on February the 8th, but more a, you know, I feel like we've gotten in a rut. I feel like we're eating the same things over and over again. Well, you can kind of get an idea. Definitely if you're a week-long meal planner, I can get one week on a half sheet of paper. So that's us, I'm a week-long meal planner. But I can get an idea of how often we're repeating things. Or we can, if we have that moment of, you know, that was really good and we haven't eaten it in a while, we can see how long ago it was. So just writing it down in some sort of journal for yourself so that you're keeping track of it um, and not, not forgetting things that you love. You do kind of wake up one day and realize, you know, it's been ages. Um, that's okay, good thing you threw in some other things to eat, but it can be a helpful reminder too. Um, so to start off, um, you know, grab that blank calendar that we posted today and um, I think we stuck in the link as well. Uh, the next one is on the calendar, plug in what you have this week or the, you know, if you're doing your week long, what do I have this week? What's coming up? So for me, planning our week, Monday, I need sandwiches. Um, you know, and then Monday is sandwiches, but it's AHG sandwiches. And Tuesday, uh, chili, Wednesday, you know, it's super simple here, guys. But then I know when I'm going to the store, oh, 
we don't have any more chili beans. We used them all last week in red beans and rice. We literally did. So if chili beans is going on our meal plan um, come Wednesday, when I go to the grocery store, we either need to eat chili after Wednesday uh, so that I can buy them, or we need something else because there are no chili beans here. We use them all up. Um, you know, that's why you're doing this is to save yourself time and effort, but also what's for dinner has been solved. Um, so one side that I want to get to is freezer cooking. I mentioned freezer prepping, but freezer cooking, uh, there are two ways that you can do this. So there's folks that will sit down and they'll cook an entire month's worth of food in one day, or maybe not cook it, but at least get it all in the bag. You can go that route, but you can also start really small with freezer cooking. And when you make a meal intentionally, making more. So when we make pot, a chicken pot pie, for example, I never make just one pie. I always make two, sometimes three, um, and those extra ones go into the freezer. Uh, you're not gonna cook those, so you're gonna just put them together, put the top layer on it and stick it straight in the freezer, and then you'll pull it out, let it thaw, and cook it. Uh, you didn't have to put it together. So there's a number of reasons for this. You're saving yourself a lot of time. I mean, there is going to be a night in the next month that you are not gonna feel like cooking, and now you don't have to, but you're also saving yourself cleanup. This is the magical part of freezer cooking because I made the kitchen messy once, but I made multiple meals in that once. So a huge tip to help you get started. Don't try it a month first off. Don't, don't go there uh, as your very first freezer cooking experience. You're going to be exhausted. It does take all day long to get that many meals in the freezer. Um, but what I would encourage you to do is pick one meat. Chicken is the easiest make a bunch of shredded chicken or cheat and go to Costco or Sam's. If you have a membership, they sell two pound off the bone rotisserie chicken cooked and vacuum sealed. Grab it with one two pound container from Costco. It's probably my favorite thing that Costco sells. Um, one two pound rotisserie chicken off the bone thing. I can probably make hmm, 10, maybe eight chicken pot pies. Kind of depends on how much chicken we stick in them. It's a ton of chicken. You don't even think about how much chicken it is. And it's not a horrible price. Uh, so I'm kind of okay with it. It's a little bit of a splurge based on the price per pound of chicken, but you didn't have to cook it. You didn't have to shred it. You didn't have to do anything. You just brought it home and you were ready to start freezer cooking. So if you really want to get started the right way, that's probably it. Not the most frugal, but you're getting a bunch of meals made with this one chunk for, I think it's like 11 or 12 bucks in our store. So it's a little, uh, maybe not, maybe a little bit less than that. It's a normally about $5 a pound based on however much is in your section. So definitely more expensive than just buying chicken and making it yourself, which is also easy. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying if you're wanting to get started and you don't want any stumbling blocks to make you stop, that little package is amazing. But the point of that being that I just want you to stick with one meat and think about the things that you can make with it. So for us, that meat can go into chicken pot pies, chicken and rice and broccoli casseroles. Um, you can make, oh, there's so many chicken casseroles that you can put together um, with just boneless shredded chicken breast. Um, so focusing on that, picking maybe three different casseroles, four if you feel super special, uh, and just plugging those away in one day. I have no clue what our dog is into, so sorry if the barking is bothering anybody, uh, but he's going a bit crazy in the front yard. Uh, so focusing on those few casseroles and then um, fo you've got just the ingredients you need for those, one kind of meat for those, and you're doing pretty well. You're not going to sit there having to fry ham up some hamburger and deal with chicken, you know, one meat and recipes that go with them. And you'll find too that those recipes tend to also call for the same items because that meat tends to have the same flavor around most of those casseroles. So, you know, we're gonna need some onions, we're gonna need some celery, uh, you know, whatever's gonna go into those casseroles, but they tend to be similar items. So we get into that mindset, we chop all the onions, we chop all of this, and you can get a number of things in the freezer all at the same time. Uh, I know that it's maybe just four different meals, but maybe you made a couple of them. You spread that out, as long as you freeze them correctly and something that can hold, you could have a freezer meal once a week, twice a week, and those were two meals you didn't have to cook. The other way to freezer cook, and this is what we tend to do the most, is usually whatever we're eating tonight, having extra and intentionally freezing the extra. So uh, last week we ate red beans and rice, half got put up in um, just a container in the fridge, the other half goes straight to the freezer. So it may not, that other half may not be enough to feed all of us, there are seven people here, but it's definitely enough that if there was a night that 
uh, you know, we had date night or uh, half of the family is gone doing something, the other half of the family has a meal that's perfect for them. Sometimes the amount that we freeze is even more than we need the next time we eat a meal. Um, so that works out too. We ate chili, I guess probably two weeks ago now, froze all the leftovers for the chili. And then when we got it back out, we still had leftovers after that. We didn't refreeze that, uh, we just ate on it. But it was still wonderful to have that whole meal put aside you know, for another time without us having to even do any work, just have to thaw it. Um, now, there's a, a different side that doesn't even involve cooking at the time. This is probably the easiest way to go. You're just gonna get your ingredients together and throw them into a bag. So I'm not gonna cook it, um, but I'm putting it all into a bag sealing it up and sticking it into the freezer. You'll find a lot of recipes uh, that are slow cooker recipes that work this way. So if you just Google chicken uh, slow cooker freezer recipe, um, that's gonna plug in exactly what you want to return. Uh, and it is gonna be a bunch of recipes that don't involve cooking the chicken. Uh, it's gonna be chicken that you put in that's raw with the ingredients uh, in the bag together so that I can take the frozen bag and dump it out into the slow cooker first thing in the morning and then have a great meal. Now you'll also find Instapot recipes that work this way too, because we can use frozen things in an Instant Pot and have it in less than an hour cooked and ready to go. So you could do that same thing, chicken Instant Pot freezer recipes. Um, it's a toss up as to how, how many of each one you'll find. Um, but pretty much any instant pot recipe can be turned into a slow cooker recipe and any slow cooker recipe can be turned into an instant pot. It's not that tricky. Um, so if you find something, you can just say, hey, we'll cook it at a faster temperature or we'll cook it in the morning slow cook. It's pretty much the same ingredients though. Um, one thing to consider is a slow cooker needs more liquid than an instant pot recipe needs. Um, so if something calls, if it's a slow cooker recipe and it calls for a bunch of beef broth, I probably don't need to add as much to the Instant Pot recipe. So just a little inside tip if you're deciding to go that, that route. Kimberly is sharing too that she pairs up with family and then they cook and share. That's a brilliant idea. And actually, uh, you know, I wanna mention, since you mentioned it, we'll run with it. You know, I don't know where people are with COVIDness, um, but the most fun I've ever had freezer cooking has been when friends came over and we all worked on a bunch of meals together. You've got company you know, you're not stuck in the kitchen all day by yourself. Um, or you did it on your own, but then you got together, you had a, a girl's night out and you just all swapped the various things. So, you know, we at home made four chicken pot pies. We kept one for ourselves. We took three uh, at a gathering. Everybody bought three for the different families and you just all swapped them. So there's a lot of fun things that you can do with that. Uh, I know right now you may not want to be around folks, but uh, you know, when you feel a little looser, <laughs> you, then can gather and cook and share and swap and not have to feel like you did all the effort yourself. Um, oh, Paige says, you have a slow cooker and you keep seeing all the Instant Pot recipes uh, and you're wondering, is it worth getting or is a slow cooker fine? It really depends on you, Paige, and when you like to think about dinner. So sometimes for me, I would love to be a slow cooker. It sat there all day long in the, in the crock pot. Um, but nine times out of 10, it's about one o'clock in the afternoon. And I then remember that I was supposed to have started the crock pot like four hours ago. Um, I just, I don't always have dinner on my brain when I first wake up. That's my, that's my problem with like long-term frozen slow cooker recipes. So we will turn to the Instant Pot for those very often. Um, I don't know that I would say you have to get an Instant Pot, but we do see some crazy good sales. Um, we just saw the Crock-Pot Express, which is their version of an Instant Pot, so it can actually slow cook and it can Instant Pot itself. It's a pressure cooker. Um, was at Best Buy for like 39 bucks, and they run that every three or four weeks. So watching Best Buy's one-day deals, they only run it for a day, so you have to catch it fast. Um, but 39 bucks for an Instant Pot and a slow cooker all in one is a pretty good price. Um, we will see decent prices on the Instant Pot itself, but we won't see more of them until closer to Mother's Day. Uh, not many people want an Instant Pot for Valentine's Day, so uh, I would wait if you're wanting the name brand, but watch Best Buy if you're wanting to grab an Instant Pot now, because they do put some pretty sweet one day deals up. Um, slow cooker works though. If you're in the routine of remembering to get it started early, then the recipes are about the same. So if I take an Instant Pot recipe and I wanna turn it into a slow cooker recipe, I just need to add more fluid. 
whether that's water, whether it's beef broth, chicken broth, um, you know, can of soup, whatever you, whatever the recipe calls for as its starter liquid, if it was an instant pot recipe, just add more um, it, on the slow cooker recipe because it's gonna, it's gonna simmer down where the Instant Pot, it's not cooking long enough to simmer down, so I wouldn't want a ton of fluids in there or it's gonna be really, really soupy, watery. The slow cooker, I do, so that it can cook down over the day and it doesn't go dry and burn. You'd be surprised what you can do in a slow cooker as well. So even a stovetop recipe, even an oven recipe, we did Brussels sprouts um, two Sundays ago and had them in the slow cooker the whole time we were gone, just Brussels sprouts with some olive oil and salt and pepper. They got a little crispy on the edges, but they were delicious. And it was exactly what I would have put in the oven, but I wouldn't want to bake Brussels sprouts in the oven when I wasn't home. It doesn't need to be in the oven that long. Do it in your slow cooker. Um, so your slow cooker is pretty resourceful. Just remember that. As the new appliance looks fancy, your slow cooker is still great, Paige. Um, I think we all tend to look at the next appliance and we want it. So we got sent an air fryer um, to try out around Christmas and never had even thought of getting one before. But even for that, like it's really just a little tiny mini oven. Like it's nice and our chicken wings were super crispy last night and that was great. But do I need to go buy an air fryer just to have super crispy chicken wings? I don't know, how often do you eat chicken wings? You know, I think when you come to small appliances, sometimes they sound fancy, but how much are you going to actually use them? That's really your call and based on what you normally eat. Um, but I know that there are some folks that would also rave about their air fryer. I mean, I'm okay with it. I just, I know that I can live without it as well. Um, so Paige asks as well, is the Instant Pot brand better than the off-brand Crock-Pot? You know, I haven't heard anything negative about any of the brands and Crock-Pot is still a name brand. Um, I think if anything, Instant Pot is kind of got a little too big for their britches. And so they're selling newer models, but the models don't necessarily do anything that the older models didn't do. Uh, I think you just find one that you're happy with and you run with it. Um, there are some off brands that maybe I don't know that I would trust in a pressure cooker line, um, but Crock-Pot's not one of them. I think you're fine if you went with the $39 Crock-Pot the next time Best Buy pops it up. Um, and it is at least once a month. So um, you know, don't panic. But I don't know that I would go with some off-brand kind of funky, you've never heard of this brand before in your life um, because we're talking about a pressure cooker and we do want to make sure that it's going to seal, that it's not going to you know, explode in your hands. I actually had a, a good friend who that happened um, and so she had to deal with burns all over her chest and stomach from that. Um, she, didn't, uh, she didn't know how to unseal it. She tried to unseal it when it was still lit and it let her or when it was still um, fully sealed and it shouldn't let you. Um, but it did, it was a cheaper brand. So you do need to be a little cautious with Instant Pots but, or with pressure cookers, but a crock pot would be fine. Um, and Stacy's saying that's the, the main reason that she went with the name brand was just kind of, um, oh, it, it was because of what Jen and Jeremy said. Also in the Instant Pot, you can sear and make a little more texture, yes. So it's most of these as well, as you look at what all they do, searing is really just the function of don't put in f any fluids in yet so that it's right on uh, the bottom and it is going to brown up anything would just like it was on a stove. Um, you wouldn't necessarily do that in a crock pot, but you can do that in most of the Instant Pot and Crock Pot Express models and some of the off brands as well. Um, okay. Um, just trying to catch up on y'all's comments. So in terms of all of this, I know I've kind of thrown it, we've been all over the board here, but hopefully some of these are some good tips on just getting you started. I would encourage you, if you are wanting to get into meal planning, please don't go for the whole month right away because you'll feel like you just wasted your time when you skip a meal or when you change a meal around. Another one, if you're just getting started, don't assign them today. So just map out seven meals for the next week and cross them off as you eat them. Um, so I know that I have these things set aside for the next seven days uh, and we're good. We're not gonna have to run to the store to get items. We can make what we plan, but we're not assigning it to a day. And the reason I encourage you to do that when you get started is you're not used to having an assignment and some of us don't handle that well. So you get to the end of the day and you're ready to cook dinner, you're like, I don't want that. Um, this is helping you not feel quite so tied down to what you've assigned yourself. Once you get in the habit of eating from a meal plan, then go for it if you wanna assign it to a day but just having a general idea of what we're gonna cook this week is a huge start uh, to staying on budget in the grocery store and eating from what you have, making sure that we're not just letting things go bad because we're forgetting about them. Uh, I also mentioned a few weeks ago in terms of um, 
cutting our budgets or cutting our grocery budgets, uh, having a week that you ate from the pantry or you ate from what you had and you didn't go to the grocery store. Um, so when I mentioned that, I mentioned the end of the month. It is one of the best weeks because we don't see as many sales at the end of the month. Um, but that's also something, you know, that's going to mean planning for two weeks to be able to do that. Or at the end of that, that week, you're about to start that next meal plan where you don't plan to shop. It really does mean sitting in your pantry um, or right in front of your freezer for a while to even figure out what you have. But if you do that a few weeks in advance, um, then you're more apt to be able to make it through that whole week without going to the store. So um, it's a huge way to cut your grocery budget to just take a whole week off from grocery shopping. But sometimes to succeed at that means just planning a little bit more than you would normally plan for your meal plans. Um, but I would encourage you to try it. It doesn't have to be every month, but once a quarter that we, you know, we're going to eat up some of this food that has been in here for a while. You don't want to do that. Um, Wendy says, it's President's Day, a good, a good time for a new dishwasher. Yours broke. You know, Wendy, ours is uh, on the cusp. It really is. We've been stretching it so long. Uh, we were just joking about that, too. It's President's Day. Humorously, uh, the top of Lowe's website says, every day is an appliance holiday. That is their new slogan for appliances. That is not the case. Um, President's Day is kind of a little pretend holiday. It's not, uh, we don't see significant sales. You might see some, um, but from what I was looking through, even on the nicer dishwashers, um, not not magical sales. So I would, uh, if yours is broken and you can't, oh, I, yours broke in December, um, I guess you've been holding out already a little while. I would still continue to hold out if you can. We've got a bit of a stretch here though, until we really see some decent sales. So I don't know how long you wanna hold out. What I would look for is, um, you know, seeing if you've got some appliance uh, like closeout centers near you, look for scratch and dents at Lowe's and Home Depot as well. They do get units that come in that maybe somebody got and then they're like, ah, I don't want that one or it doesn't have the feature that they were wanting. Sometimes you can find some great deals on dishwashers. The only suggestion I would have there is for those scratch and dents that might actually be worthwhile to have them install. Uh, because with dishwashers, you may find when you get it home that it is missing a key part that you didn't realize. Um, so I would have them do that install versus you do the install so that they know that it is correct and you know that they hooked it up. So if something doesn't work, you have them to come back and deal with it. Uh, but don't look for magical sales for a couple of months. I'm sorry. Uh, and Mary, uh, you have a family of seven. So how can you meal plan? Um, we do too, if you count us in. So we have five kids and then it's my husband and I. So Mary, what I would, again, what I would recommend is that you still start with that list of the things that you know you love to eat and then you just map them out. We stick with just the basic entree. So uh, we always have a left overnight. We always have a pizza night, breakfast for dinner. I told you these, some of these things are normal. I, we, guys, we have like 27 chickens in our yard. So we have to have breakfast for dinner at least once a week. and probably should have breakfast a few times a week. Um, but don't go super fancy. You probably don't go super fancy with your cooking already with seven people in the house. We eat pretty basic. There's a meat, there's a starch, there's a veggie. That is a normal dinner around here. Um, but just mapping out what that meat is, is already a huge help. Uh, sometimes mapping out the starch, if I need a bunch of potatoes, like if I, if I wanted potatoes every night, but we're not gonna have that much. Um, but usually for us, sometimes it's just the main entree. And we tend to have the same sides with those items uh, every time we eat them. So for us, one of our favorites is Lipton onion soup burgers. It's literally burgers that we have mixed Lipton onion soup mix into with some Worcestershire and an, and an egg to hold it all together. Um, but we always have that with rice and like black eyed peas or field peas. That's dinner. Um, so you just getting an idea of the key portions of dinner is keeping you on track. It's keeping you on track in the grocery store. It's keeping you on track with how much you're keeping in the house. Um, so it doesn't have to be this elaborate meal that you're planning for seven people, just you getting an idea ahead of time of what you're gonna eat. That's all it is. So, you know, saying that I meal plan is not, and, and this is where, honestly, this is where my, my I, don't, I don't, I can't think of the right word, my dislike for sites that charge you for meal plans. There are some great ones out there and they have great meal plans, but they're not what you eat. And how often do you want to sit down and eat something you've never eaten before? Um, so I can remember when my husband and I, before we had children, we went on a cruise, 
um, to Alaska. This was like our last um, thing we ever did before we became parents. And we actually came home and found out that we were pregnant with twins. So I think we never would have done it had we known. Uh, we would have saved all of the pennies that we had, but we did. We'd already paid for it and everything. By the end of that cruise, we were both looking at each other and saying, we just want to go home and we just want to eat a normal dinner because this food's amazing, but it's not what you're used to. And it's the same exact thing when we go and we buy a meal plan and they hand us 30 meals. Um, yay, that's great. I still have to cook them. It didn't do me any good. I know it's not like it was 30 meals that just arrived cooked, but there are 30 meals that I don't normally eat. And the odds of you eating every single one of them is really slim. So you sit down, you map out what you normally eat, plug in one or two new things a week. I wouldn't go past two, that's a little stressful, and you probably don't have everything to make them. So you're gonna be paying out of pocket um, for things that aren't on sale so that you can have a new recipe that week. It's not really the best way to save money. You go with what you love, you map those in, one or two new things here and there, and see if you love them, add them in more if you do. But that's how you want to approach this. Don't go overboard. Don't think it's super fancy. It's just you getting an idea early so that you can make sure you have everything on hand. Um, okay. And um, Lynn Marshall asks, best place to buy TurboTax? So Lynn, if you're looking to purchase it, uh, like the download version, we've seen some sales on that. In um, on Amazon, we've seen some sales. If you've ever checked out the site Newegg, it's a site that usually sells software and computer parts, but newegg.com has been selling a lot, or running a lot of deals on H&R Block and TurboTax. I would not recommend going to TurboTax.com. On their website, they actually offer some of the worst deals. Um, that's just what you have to learn from TurboTax. So you do wanna look at purchasing the software. Uh, one idea here, if you're looking for a deal and you can't find anything, uh, this week, Office Depot is offering 100% rewards back on batteries. Get the batteries, get two packs of batteries if you want. You'll have those rewards back in your account by the end of the week, and then use those rewards to buy TurboTax. Like at least you got something. You got a bunch of batteries uh, and you got TurboTax. So that might be an option too if you're not finding a deal that you like. Uh, I actually have a post scheduled to go up tomorrow morning of all the free tax sites. So we used to use TurboTax for years. That was hands down what we always did. Um, I, I would actually recommend that you look at um, Credit Karma. Um, so it's credit and then K-A-R-M-A dot com slash tax. It's completely free for every level. Doesn't matter how uh, advanced your taxes are. Free with free e-filing for federal and for state. So pretty sweet. Um, so they are what, what I use. So creditkarma.com slash tax is that website. There are a, another, a, a number actually of other programs that are completely free. Um, free tax USA is another one free at all levels. So again, like if you have business income, if you have retirement income, doesn't matter. Uh, and that one, it's a free e-file and a $12 and 95 cent state file. Um, but even the state's not an added cost. So at least look into those because it's significantly cheaper than TurboTax. And some of these programs actually will let you upload your taxes from last year from any other provider. So um, that's like a whole nother q and I, I love taxes. It's a, a weird quirk of mine, um, but I gave up on TurboTax uh, quite a number of years ago just because of their cost and they were only going up. They were, um, that's just what Intuit is. Um, those of us who own businesses and have QuickBooks, we know every year that you need to get a new QuickBooks. Um, we stretch ours way past the time that you're supposed to keep it, but it's crazy expensive. Uh, so kind of eventually have to give up on those brands. It's like in the grocery store and giving up on Tide and uh, all the detergents that are never as cheap as the other ones. Um, so Jen and Jeremy says, we have a local repair guy that buys broken appliances from people. He repairs them and sells them for 25 to 75 bucks. Um, that's pretty sweet. I don't know where you live, um, but I would definitely uh, be willing to go check that out. Um, we joked this past weekend it, as it was snowing in North Carolina that maybe we should head up. My dad had a place where he bought a clearance dishwasher near Asheville. I don't even know where it is, but I just wanted to go see the snow. I was trying to talk my husband into a road trip to buy a dishwasher, um, but I bet I'd go on a road trip for a $75 dishwasher for sure. Paige, one more random CVS question. You have a coupon for $3 off eight on head and shoulders and three off 10 on head and shoulders, um, as well as three off four or 18. That's a lot of coupons. Um, so what you wanna do, anytime you wanna stack coupons at CVS, you basically wanna add them together to where the most expensive or most like, what am I trying to say? The highest value store coupon 
if it were to come off first, so if I had like a seven off 15, um, so it came off first, well now my total is eight. So nothing else is gonna come off. I really want to make sure that as each coupon came off, that I have enough to where the total will still work for the next coupon and the next coupon. Um, so for example, you just mentioned a lot of numbers there, but if you had a three off 18 and a three off 10, um, then I need to buy, or sorry, a three off eight and a three off 10, uh, I need to buy enough to where when the last $3 came off, I still owed 10. Um, because I need the highest value to still be good, if that makes sense. It's wanting a $10 purchase, so if I grabbed um, even basically $13 worth, they would both come off in the end. Um, so the three off 10 would work on if it came off first, or the three off eight would work if it came off first, but either way, I would still owe $10 in case that one came off last. Hopefully that makes sense. So you kind of just add them up, Based and make sure that you owe the, the amount needed for the highest amount coupon uh, last because you never know the order they're gonna come off on. Um, uh, let's see, oh, and good, Lynn, I'm glad you've tried. Uh, free Tax USA is a great one. Creditkarma.com uh, slash tax or Free Tax USA. Um, and uh, <laughs> I agree. Uh, completely, Jennifer, that Tide is a little too big for their britches. And definitely when they no longer give us actual coupons in the flyer, uh, it just, you know, now you've really lost my attention at that point, uh, Tide. Let's see. Okay. Um, to, uh, I guess we've kind of hit time. If you've got further questions on meal planning, um, we did post today how to get started meal planning with printables with a blank calendar. Uh, just a way to kind of walk you through the steps of what you want to do to break it all down, make it as simple as possible. So um, we'll stick that link in again, but click through that, get, get the printables and kind of get started just a little bit, one week at a time, map out the recipes that you love, um, plug some of those in and then plug in one or two new ones, don't go overboard. Uh, not only on that, uh, you know, new ones I do pay more for, I don't have all the ingredients for. New ones are also, if you've got kids, new ones are scary because they may not eat any of it. And then you took all the time to make a new recipe only to have half the family uh, eat and the other half of the family grumble. Uh, that's not allowed at our house, but it doesn't mean that I'm happy to see them not enjoy their food either. Um, so that's why I also recommend limiting how many new things you try. Um, it's just a lot less frustrating for everyone at the dinner table. Um, and then try your hand at freezer cooking at least something we have. Um, I should have pulled this uh, before I started, but we do have, if you go to Southern Savers and just search uh, freezer cooking meals, we've done a whole batch. I also did a YouTube video uh, and have links uh, on that video uh, where you can follow a whole freezer cooking day. So if you go to our YouTube channel uh, and search for freezer cooking, you will find that one. We did seven, seven different meals and we made enough for 30 meals total, but it was a day, like it took us four to five hours to put all that together and I had help. Um, so it, I was not cooking by myself, but it's still great if you're trying to figure out freezer cooking. So check out that video and the links that are with the video to find the recipes that we used. Um, hopefully you'll you know be able to watch it and get some ideas on how to make it work for you. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and hop off. We have something in our yard that my, my dog really would like my husband to go check out um, and we'll get that solved. Um, I will be back tomorrow at two o'clock to go through all the drugstore deals. So Tuesday at two for the top drugstore deals uh, and then back on on Wednesday as we come home with all our grocery deals. So I will hopefully catch you guys tomorrow or later in the week. I hope you have a great start to your week and uh, um, I will talk to you again soon. Thanks for watching tonight.